resourced person in the whole of Queensland except some in Brisbane City Council. So there was a view early on in 2008 that making bigger councils would give the parties traction. It didn't eventuate. Mayoral elections, 29 sitting mayors were returned, so that's 39 per cent. But in 2008, 55 per cent were returned, and in 2004, 63 were returned. 27 sitting mayors were defeated out of, 50, out of what was it, election 43. So 27 out of 43 sitting defeated, which is a record. 20 new mayors, no previous local government experience at all, including the second and third largest councils in Australia, Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast, have new mayors with no local government experience at all. 12 female mayors, and the LJQ said a strong pattern of mayors defeated after one term after amalgamations continued from their research. Councillors, 70% of sitting councillors were successful, but there's a record number of new councillors, so a lot of councillors just didn't stand again. So more than half of the councillors in local government in Queensland are new. Significant councillor loss. Voter turnout, 80% in 2008, 85, and in 2004, about 85 as well. Atten this is interesting, attendance voting was 81%, postal voting only 75.9%. I thought it might have been the other way around. State election, turnout was 91% and the question obviously is with five weeks difference what impact did that have. Uh, I want to talk now about the state of the state, Queensland, one slide. And I said this is not party politics. They had their elections on the 24th of March. The previous Labor government out of 89 seats has seven. The question being asked on the night of the election was what's the difference between a Toyota uh, what was it, a Toyota, Tarago, and the <laughs> Queensland Labor government? Tarago's got eight seats, you know, that's just <laughs> huge. How can it get that bad? Seriously. Um, and really the previous government was no friend of local government, and I would say this about a coalition government as well, it's not party politics for me at all. And, you know, we ask questions about did that impact in any way the result? The credit rating, for Queensland is double A. The cost of that is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, nearly billions of dollars in additional loan repayments, the cost of debt. Nearly billions more because of our credit rating. Have a look at this, $62 billion worth of debt, our state government in the next four years predicted to be $100 billion worth of debt. And I know, that the state government knew this when it made the decisions. It made, where's the accountability? If I embezzle $10,000, I'd go to jail. The CMC, ICAC, I don't know what the Victorian version is, would be all over me and I'd end up in jail. I didn't get elected, you know, I just don't think there's anywhere near enough accountability. That's criminal in my view. 20,000, new Premier, 20,000 jobs to go. With that level of debt, 20, those poor people, not their fault, 20,000 jobs to go in Queensland. Water fiasco, I shouldn't even, could short version. Drought in South East Queensland in the early 2000s. Can't have the fastest growing region in the country running out of water. World's best practice water reform. Water grid, connect up all the bulk storages, so all the dams, might be a great bit of logic. Pump water around, when it's raining in one dam, pump it, store it in another, that's okay. Couldn't stop, couldn't help themselves. Let's take distribution and retail off councils too. We argued, we said, don't do that. We support the grid, don't do that. They still did it. Took it office on the 1st of July 2010. People on the Gold Coast complained that the price of water had, and went into three distributor retailer companies um, that we had shares in, gave them $1.4 billion worth of assets and got a 1.1% return, not real good. Um, and Price of water went up the Gold Coast, people complained, so the state government said, well, if you want to take it back, you can take water back, uh, but if you do, you have to pay for it. So guess what they did? So two years later, on the 1st of July, we spent all this, the angst for the staff, the time, the money to take our water business and have to transition into it. A new company, set this new company up, employ, do all of that, and 18 months later, we have to start the process of disestablishing that business and re -establishing. Man, I reckon, Conservatively over $200 million wasted, lost, gone, just in that space alone. Just 
I want to share some thoughts on the future of local government quickly or things I've observed during my 38 year sabbatical from law. I actually wanted to do law when I was at high school but my mum died just as I was finishing sixth form as it was at the time. So you know, I was the eldest or younger brother, two younger sisters. My dad was already working three jobs so all of a sudden I couldn't go off and do law. So I thought, oh, there's a job at the local council. It was a condition of employment you had to study. I thought, if I pick my subjects carefully, you know, maybe a couple of years I can go off. Here I am, 38 years. It really does get in your blood, and it just is such a big family. I, I could talk for a long while about my views on the local government family. Um, if those of you who are students of leadership know that one of the most important things is courage. So I have many questions. There's few easy answers, but I passionately believe, passionately believe nothing really happens without a conversation. So I think we've got to start talking about some of these things. True or false? Sorry if there's any kangaroo supporters. Is this a good description of local government? I actually reckon it is. It's, not, it's out of a book by John Cotter called Leading Change, which is a great book, and he was not talking about local government or indeed government, but when I read it, I thought, that's, my, that's the industry I work in. It's a great description of it. You know, we run our business like softly humming Swiss watches. We do. Nothing much goes wrong. We get our service delivery. We pick the bins up, and if we miss one, we go and pick it up again. But, you know... Are we really focused on hierarchy and management and does that stifle what we need to achieve in terms of leadership? And do our plans and budget processes really, are they inadequate in terms of the strategic and visionary stuff we need to do? I actually think it's a great description of local government. But is that the local government we need for the future? I don't think it is. I think the tree has to be shaken. Local government I started in 38 years ago was leaning on a shovel. It was that, in my view. Now it's John Cotter's description. Neither of those things are the local government we need for the future. Talk a bit about our financial future. And I know we have really struggled. The numbers just have not been working for us. But before I do, very quickly, I don't know, you've probably been at the conference, don't know whether you've caught up with some latest financial information from Japan and from the US. Firstly, in terms of Japan in the last seven hours. US. This is the big news. Um, in terms of financial recovery in the US, the mail is it's going to be led by some very significant amalgamations and consolidations of businesses over there. So if you get in early and invest, you could make some money. Hale Business Systems, Mary Kay Cosmetics, Fuller Brush and WR Grayson Company are all tipped to merge to become... <laughs> Polygram Records, Warner Brothers and Zesta Crackers will join forces to be... <laughs> what about Zippo Manufacturing, Audi Motors, Dofasco and Dakota Mining? They'll be... <laughs> FedEx will, is expected to join its major competitor, UPS, and they will be... Fairchild Electronics, Honeywell Computers. <laughs> Grey Poupon and Docker Pants, expected to be referred to as. 
And finally, my favourite, Victoria's Secret and Smith & Wesson will merge under the new name. Some financial considerations that we're really grappling with in Queensland, and I'm sure many of you are too. We lost 40% subsidy, and I'm sure you did a long time ago. We lost 40% subsidy from the state on capital works. The state is at best, I couldn't think of any other way to say it, financially challenged. $100 billion worth of debt, wow. The federal government's preoccupied with getting into surplus, so we don't seem to get too much money coming from the feds our way either. But councils don't want to put rates up. That's not politically popular for them or charges. Um, funding growth and infrastructure is a really significant issue, for, particularly for growth councils, but I think generally. The state continues to give us the old chestnut, more to do and doesn't give us the resources. Major increased requirements legislate by legislation on us for asset management, that's having a financial impact. Um, for those of you who are accountants, funding depreciation, huge financial impact potentially. I read this statistic the other day which I thought was really interesting. Local government collects 3% of all government taxes but is responsible for 11% of public sector expenditure and manages 35% of government assets. You know, we've got some great things to be proud of and good stories to tell. I don't think we tell them well enough. A new financial management, we are having this conversation in our management team right now. The old way of taking what you did last year and adding a certain percent, I think it's gone. It has to be gone. And I think that's what most councils do, but I think it's got to be gone. We start, need to start genuinely looking for alternative sources of revenue. And the question for me is, should we really be competing with private enterprise or not? We have different views on that in our management team. True or false? Local government can sometimes be a bit hypocritical. <laughs> Maybe a lot. Uh, just as an example, you know, South East Queensland, like my council, this was an election year budget last year. We can only put rates up CPI. And the impact for them of that was that the starting position for them for this year's rate increase, and they knew it, was 7.8% just the general rate increase. That's their starting position because they only put rates up CPI last year. They still did that. You know the scary bit? We were the largest rate increase in South East Queensland in CPI in an election year. That's just wrong. Really is wrong. I have a colleague who works for a council that says they will go bankrupt if they don't put rates up 6.5%. The new council will only put them up 3.5% but won't say it's going to cut services. Nine swimming pools that cost them a fortune won't even... This stuff's not good enough in my view. I think there should be a law requiring the CEO, CFOs, to write a report on the public record about annual budgets and to write a financial report. Now, if we expect this level of accountability from senior staff, we need to pay them more in my view, but I think we've got to start to get in the space. I'm going to talk about a real concern I personally have about government and politics, but I think we as professionals on behalf of our communities need to start standing up some more. I want to, just some areas now, I want to talk a bit about our community, our profile and our performance. Uh, I don't know that we realise that our communities vote for state and feds as well and if we got better at engaging them and we were the model, I reckon they'd come along with us, particularly in the state or federal space. I think we and maybe this is not Victoria, and if you're good in these spaces, well done, let me know, and I'd like to come and learn from you guys, but it's not my experience in New South Wales and Queensland. I think we're good enough. My council's not good enough yet. We're, we're trying at informing, educating, and engaging our community. It's not their fault they don't know these things to a large extent. I don't think we're good enough at it. Um, and I don't think we're good enough at seeing or influencing the big picture at local government level, particularly. We're good at whinging about it, but we're not that good at finding genuine, realistic solutions. Our performance, can, I can't believe we don't benchmark nationally as an industry. We don't benchmark amongst our six councils in South East Queensland. Just, it's wrong. It, oh, but it's not comparing apples with apples. BS, you know, sure, if it's not comparing apples with apples, Make it an apples with apples comparison by qualifying it. But whenever we find excuses to avoid these things, we're never going to improve our performance. 